Welcome to the Virtual Foundry Podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Virtual Foundry Podcast. This is Volume 3, Episode 10. Today is Friday, August 26th, 2022. The time is 1137 a.m. and the temperature is a very lovely 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 22 degrees for you Celsius users. And if you've been following along, you know that 21 to 23 degrees Celsius is my sweet spot. So I'm super digging it. Today, we're going to be talking about active metals, and that's going to include aluminum and titanium and maybe one or two more that enter into our discussion. I'm Tricia Cease, president of the Virtual Foundry, and with me as always is Brad Woods, founder, inventor, and all-around science guy. Say hello, Brad. Hi, everybody. So, Brad, as you know, most of the Virtual Foundry materials debind and sinter in open atmosphere. That means you don't need to add any gas in your kiln. So two things need to happen during the sintering phase of the debind and sinter process. One is that the part shape is supported and we use a sintering refractory ballast for that. And the other is that oxygen is prevented from reaching the part, and we use sintering carbon for that piece, which is why we can sinter these metal pieces in open atmosphere. But there are a couple of exceptions to that, namely titanium and aluminum. So Brad, tell us about why these are different. Right. <clears throat> and this, this comes up occasionally, questions from our users, and we make these as fluid but they're particularly challenging to center and, and just take a, a, a different setup. It's just kind of a whole different world. And the reason is that these are considered active metals or reactive, depending on who you ask. But basically what that means is that they chemically want to pick up an, an oxygen atom so aggressively that they'll literally draw it out of like in the terms of a sintering furnace, they'll extract oxygen from the brick, from the fire brick and things like that. It's, it's a remarkably powerful chemical reaction. Um, and this is also the reason that none of these elements occur in their pure form in nature. They're always in some form of an oxide. So it's either aluminum oxide or titanium dioxide, things like that. And when these are made on a commercial scale, what they're doing is they're reducing it, is the term. So they're removing that oxygen molecule from the compound, from, from the oxide, whether it's uh, aluminum oxide or titanium dioxide, they're, they're just getting rid of that oxygen molecule from it. And what happens is, they are so chemically aggressive, like I said, they try to pick up oxygen, that it becomes very difficult to sinter them. What happens with each of these materials is when exposed to open air, they'll pick up what's called a passivating layer. So you'll have a metal, say, picture a block of aluminum. You're not actually looking at a block of aluminum. Within minutes of you cleaning the surface, a new layer of aluminum oxide will develop. And that layer of aluminum oxide has a melting point that's many times higher than the aluminum itself. And this is why it's difficult to center these materials. Each of the particles in the powder that we use to make our filament will develop a passivating layer, making it very difficult for the particles to weld to one another. To do it, um, uh, in some examples, they'll do this in a bath of hydrogen. So they'll literally have this at a very high temperature, a temperature suitable for sintering aluminum, but they'll flood the kiln with hydrogen. And this is obviously incredibly dangerous. And the places that do this, uh, uh, they'll, they'll build, you know, like blast walls and things around their, around their sintering equipment. There are other ways to do it. And the science is actually making headway recently. In fact, I will say that I think we will be able to sinter in not necessarily an open atmosphere, as in we'll use some type of a shield gas, but there will be a method where you'll be able to sinter this in a desktop system like the ones that we're running. And as an example, this is already done pretty commonly. When you TIG weld aluminum, this is a very 
very analogous to what we're talking about here. But you don't, almost all TIG welding is done with uh, DC current. <clears throat> but what people have figured out is if you cycle AC current through it that's oscillating very quickly, it'll actually blast that oxide layer out of the way as you're welding. So it's my expectation that the sintering solution that we wind up on will be some type of electrical field assisted sintering strategy. But we're getting closer and as I wanna make sure everyone understands why these metals fall into a different category than any of the irons and the coppers. They're just chemically very different. So there are some people working on different ways to figure out this we'll call it in lab or in studio method of sintering aluminum. Yes. Um, and it's really exciting to watch that progress move forward. Right. And we talked, Trisha and I, we talked to a developer yesterday that's working on a, a desktop solution that will potentially cover this, cover this need. Now the active or the reactive part also means something different. And that is that the, material will explode yes. when it's exposed to oxygen and high heat. Right. When we get titanium and aluminum powder in here, it, uh, it has labels all over the place. We can't ship it by air. It has special handling fees uh, and it's, it's packed in an inert environment. And so people shipping this material are not messing around. <laughs> And this actually brings up kind of a sidebar. One of the advantages of working with active metals in a bound metal 3D printing strategy is that they're safe to handle. The powders aren't loose. Our air doesn't come in contact with the particles, so they don't explode. And also when you're 3D printing it, you're printing at temperatures far below any sort of danger zone with these. Because you're printing like regular plastic PLA and temperatures around 210. Yep. So yeah. you're not getting anywhere near a concerning uh, temperature in that regard. Right. There's no danger on the printing side of things. We print typically at 180 C to 210 C, somewhere in there. But as, as an experiment, we will take pieces of the aluminum filament, which is one of the most active and just set it to flame and i mean it'll keep burning as if it's plastic but it won't combust explosively and you have some uh you've done some demonstrations around the shop here to show right uh, to demonstrate that effect so when we start first started at working with active materials i wanted to make it clear to everyone that this is a little bit different than everything else that we've worked with and we take a lot of precautions during the manufacturing process and we handle these differently than we handle everything else. Um, something as simple as a static spark could set it off. So I had the idea of tossing about a quarter teaspoon, eh, maybe, maybe, maybe a teaspoon into, into a flame to show everyone what I was talking about and I kind of accidentally blinded the staff temporarily. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but I think I think you got the point across to all of us. I, I think so too. Uh, so we've talked about that oxide layer. We've talked about mixing oxygen and heat being a challenge. Uh, so commercially, we know that titanium is sintered in all metal kilns to solve that um, the factor of titanium where it will pull oxygen out of anything that it can. Correct. So what's the future of these materials? We know that people are working on different methods of um, centering the aluminum and getting really creative with that. Um, do you anticipate that same thing working with titanium where we'll get to a, a sort of desktop solution, we'll call it? Right. There's a whole range of potential outcomes. And the one that we're currently experimenting with is titanium for human body implants. <clears throat> and this is the most rigorous. And we're getting close. I would say we're probably at about 95, 90% of the way there where we could 3D print using bound metal FDM printers. We can 3D print a titanium part that is suitable for human body implant. Most people don't need that level of scrutiny. They need a strong light part. And yeah, so that's, that's 
possible right now. It's not possible for people to do in their labs, uh, but it's being done in the commercial sintering areas. And 3D printing and powder metallurgy are so hot right now that research labs all over the world are working on this. <clears throat> it's becoming less complex, easier to work with, and it's likely more well understood right now than it ever has been. And just like with 3D printing in general, and the innovation platform that Virtual Foundry is providing, people are getting really innovative and creative with figuring out how to change processes, how to bring new processes in to work with these materials in a way that brings them to the individual. Yeah, as time passes, it, it's simplified uh, and yeah, it just it gets easier. The more people we have working on this, the less complex it becomes. I should say, the more well understood it is, the less complex it becomes. So that's what's behind a couple of those untested answers on our products list when we're when we're listing the sintering temperatures of the materials, and you'll see that untested there. That's what's happening with the aluminum and the titanium. With the other materials that list untested, they require a heat that is outside the range of a normal sort of tabletop kiln. So that's what that's what that untested mark means. There are people working on figuring those out as well. And if you would like to join the effort and work with these materials to help develop the sintering processes, uh, we would love to hear from you on that. Yeah, if you contact us, we can put you in touch with other people that are working on this technology. Now, Brad, I do have one more very important question for you before we wrap up today. All right. What is the difference between a hippo and a zippo? One's lighter than the other. You're close. One is really heavy and the other is a little lighter. Uh, nice. Now that one comes from Austin from right here in the virtual <laughs> foundry. So thanks Austin for that one. Nice. If you've got a topic you'd like us to do a deep dive on, let us know at info at the virtual foundry. And also if you're working on something super cool with metal 3D printing, we'd love to interview you in this format. Reach out to us at info at the virtual foundry dot com. And be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other podcast videos. And until next time, happy printing. Thanks, everybody.